Hi guys, today I'd like to talk about one of my favorite topics, shading. And first of all, there's different forms of shading. This can be outside shutters, like shown here, which are outside of the window. This can be curtains inside, this can be zip screens, this can be roller blinds outside, the plastic ones which just go down. And these guys here, which what you see here, they also have an angle for the slats. And any form of shading can have a huge impact on the energy you consume in a house, especially as this helps you with your cooling system. So what do I mean with this? We have in a room like this, we measure the temperature for heating and or cooling anyhow. This is then managed by the intelligent room controller block. Okay, so this can, the temperature can come from the touch, from a third party sensor, from a room climate sensor, tree or air, doesn't matter. So he decides, do we need heating, do we need cooling? And then there is for each blind, one automatic blinds block. Okay, so this would be the balcony door. There could be more windows and for each window and for each blind, you would then end up with one individual shading block. Okay, so how does automatic shading now works? The intelligent room controller at the certain point asks for help. Hey, all the shading blocks in the room, can somebody assist me with the cooling because my temperature is overheating. Okay, and then every individual shading block, just imagine two more windows on, on these sides, then everybody is thinking, hey, does it help if I shade now? So is the sun at this shading or not? That's why you have one very important parameter, which is the direction. So every blind, gets the direction, north, south, also something in between, in degree. And then we know from the astronomical position, that's why you also have to enter the location where your mini server is at. So we have the geo coordinates. So we know exactly where the sun is at. We also know the height of the sun, which is later important for setting the, the angle of the slats if you have a blind like this. And also the blinds would then follow the sun. So imagine the sun goes up over there, the room gets warm, which is fine. So let's take the free energy for saving heating costs, especially in spring and autumn. But when the room is at a certain temperature, and this is in summertime, my comfort temperature, I want 21 degree. So at 21 degree, the room controller shouts for help. Please help me. And then this blind knows, okay, it's me that goes down now. And I also set the slats to the certain angle. So it's still bright in here, like, like now. Still sun comes in, so it's not fully dark, which is uncomfortable, but still light comes inside. But most of the heat is blocked outside. Then, so this blind is down, then at a certain point, both sides can be down when the sun is at the corner. And then this can go up again. So we follow the sun with our blinds automatically. Okay. What else can we do with the shades? Um, we can say, for instance, in the morning, you can use the shading to wake you up. So, especially in summer, when there's actually light outside when you stay up, you can then use the touch night light, for instance, or the alarm clock function block to wake you up, to dim up the light slowly, to open the shade slowly. And that's pretty cool as well. So in the morning, you can also then say when the sun goes up, again, astronomical position. When the sun goes up, open all the, uh, the not the windows, the slats, all the, the blinds, sorry, in the whole house, maybe except the sleeping rooms. Okay. And what about night? Do you still have neighbors, guys? Well, I do. So at night, when the sun goes down, I would like to have privacy mode. So all my blinds or curtains close automatically, really when the sun goes down. Okay. So that's in theory how the whole sh sh uh, shading system works. Now let's talk about how this is done technically. So this is the most advanced form of shading to control because just like imagine a curtain, it just goes open and close, right? And this also has the angle of the slats to set. So how can you control these motors? There's different ways. The first one is to use two relays for up and down to control any kind of motor on 230 or 110 volts. 
okay, two relays centrally wired back to the relay extension or mini server. As you can imagine, for several windows, several blinds, you have a lot of cabling going back. I prefer to go with either the shading actuator on air or the nano 2 relay on tree. Because then you only need to come with the power, high voltage, 230 or 110, and then you go onto the, uh, onto the motor with the nano 2 relay or with the shading actuator, and then you go from one shade to another. And the cabling is very simple, okay? And if you calculate everything together, really, like wiring, the effort, the mistakes probably happening if you have like this cable string in the cabinet, the huge cabinet, the relay extensions and everything, you probably end up better with going the decentral version. So either just with 230 from one to another and going on air, or with 230 and the tree cable for the bus version. Okay, then we also have other products to control 24 volt, um, typically inside uh, curtain, no, inside blinds, roller blinds. Um, uh, just a very recent product, I will uh, put it here because I forgot the name. <laughs> so, how do I now control all of this? Hmm? With our T5 push button standard that we recommend coming with our touches, we say the left top and the left down corner are used to centrally control the shades in this room. So if I have five blinds in here, by pressing the upper left corner, all the blinds in the room go up or down. And now you might think, hey, there might be situations where I would like to control just this blind, or wouldn't you? Well, think about some examples. I, I always get this question and I always ask the people for examples. Yeah, if I want to watch TV. Well, don't you want the shades to be down, all of them down anyhow? Yeah, maybe. Or maybe just the one where the sun is currently at because the screen has reflections, which is done by the automatic anyhow. But then some tricky guys tell me, hey, balcony door. I need one at least in addition for the balcony door because otherwise I could not go out. Maybe, because there is a little window contact up there. And this is used for the alarm system, of course. Also for the heating system and cooling system. So if the door is open, you do not heat or cool until a certain point. But also, we now use this if you open the, uh, the door, this and only this blind opens. So also, we thought about this, okay? But there is tons of other parameters that you can and also should set, right? I would like to also point out that those outside shadings are very sensitive to high wind speeds. Okay, as you can imagine with the thin ropes here, it's crazy, okay? So I would say that we are gonna have a look into the config now, how to set up this and more. So as you see, we already start with uh config file where I put the relay outputs already for one blind 230 volt centrally wired up and down but also we have a balcony door nano 2 relay here and a push button to control it a heating valve actuator and also the shading actuator on air to show you the differences with the automation automatic blinds block you will see that there is uh, two different versions of it if you add it, there is an integrated one and a normal one. And when you add the normal one, then first of all, you will see this block is red. Why? Then you see over here in its properties, there is the parameter D already highlighted because this is the one for the direction. And down there, you see the default value is minus one, but you should set it between zero and 230, depending on the uh, direction of this blind. So now we have to think about what blind is this. So we can say this is the window right, and this has the direction uh, east. And then we can say, okay, 90 equals east, and maybe it's just 85 because it's not perfectly east, just almost. And we say, okay, 85. Then you will see the blind turns or the block turns nice and green, and we can rename it for the visualization into window right, okay? The next one could then be balcony door and so on. Then I have my two relay outputs, which I connect onto the outputs for up 
and down here. Okay, up and down. To control it, you see we have two inputs here, completely up and completely down, but way more if you open the plus, but more on this later. So we simply drag and drop for the basic configuration our touch onto it. And then by default, again, start simulation, you can see here up, the blind goes up or down and it goes down. So automatically with the T5, the T5, the blind only listens to these two inputs here, this one and this one. When you connect the same onto a lighting controller, it will listen to the middle one, audio onto these two. That's the cool part, okay? So that's the basic configuration. And now there is some more parameters that we have to set. And actually, if you go into the info box here, you will see a ton of different inputs, outputs, and parameters that you can set. Like here, the type, is it a, uh, a Venetian blind? Is it a roller blind? Is it a curtain? Is it a, an awning and so on? Um, there is dead times of motors, the direction. There is a lot. So you can really read yourself into this. I will tell you the uh, most important ones, which is first of all, the direction, which you already set. And if you work with normal relay controlled blinds, we need to measure the time of how long it takes to open and close them. Because the config cannot know how long, how big is your window, how high, and how long the motor takes to go fully up and fully down. And this is typically measured by you on the building side by simply saving this into the configuration, going with your phone in front of it with a timer, with a stopwatch, and then you measure the time for up and down. And then I just add, let's say, a second or two if the blind goes a little slower once the mechanical part starts not to be that perfectly <laughs> oiled and stuff. Okay, So let's say the time for, uh, for up is typically a bit longer than for down. So let's say the time for up for this is 25, and the time for down is 23. Okay. Then we have the direction already. Then there is things like the, first of all, the type. Okay, we, we say it's a Venetian blind, but this can also be roller blind. So then you would set the input, uh, the, the parameter here to one. Okay, but we keep it on zero, the default. Then we have the, if we make this a little bigger here, we have the, the slat width and the distance between the slats, which you need or which you should measure from the blind that you have there. Because this is important when it comes to automatic shading and how the angle of the slats should be set to have proper shading without it being completely dark in the room. Okay, so the, let, the slat width and distance between slats. Then there is one very last important parameter, which is the TR time the return duration for the shades. And that's that's the time it takes to go from fully closed to horizontal. Okay, let me show you this in reality. But still, I do not know yet how to properly measure this time because it's rather fast, right? It's like 1.5 seconds or is it 1.7 or 1.9? It's like hard to measure by hand. So how can you do it? What I like to do is using the shading input in the function block. I will make this image a little bigger for you so you see it. What this does is shading input. It goes completely down for the time t down and then it goes back tr seconds. Time to reset, time to restore or whatever this abbreviation is for. Okay. So if I now press this in the app and you see now the slats are like this let me bring you closer guys so you see the slats are like this they're not horizontal they're still tilted then I know my set TR is too short and then this way and you can pr you can also do this in the um, in the expert settings of the app you can go here oh, this is super hard sorry Expert settings, password. This time I do not film it. Last time this happened, so I had to re record. <laughs> and now you can scroll down to the parameter TH, sorry, TR. Here it is. 
and now I adjust it as long as I find the right value. So if it is too short, it ends up like this. What if it's too long? Then it tilts it like this and then it starts moving upwards. So then you know it's set too long. So let's test it out by, um, let's say 2.5 seconds. Okay. And now it's already saved. Okay. Without the config. So now I go back to shading. It closes completely and then goes back for TR seconds. And you see it's pretty close, but it can be a little longer. So I will adjust it here quickly again. Okay, fast forwarding this. Uh, TR, check, let's go for 2.8 seconds. Okay, one more time, shading, go completely down and then TR seconds back. And now we see it's perfectly horizontal. If it moves up a little bit, that's okay, but try to be as accurate as possible because now you can then via a logic and also via the auto shading, set the lamelle so the angle is always 90 degree on the sun. So it really reflects most of the heat. That's why these two parameters, the direction and the TR are so important. Okay. So let's also add the other two devices. First, the Nano 2 Relay. We simply drag and drop it onto the page. And also the uh, shading actuator here, right? And you see automatically it takes the name, the function block takes the name of the device. So if you name them properly while learning in, then you don't have to do this afterwards. And you see the difference between those blocks here, this one and these two, is it has no outputs, Q up and Q down, because this is automatically taking it from the device. Okay. There is some settings that you can do. You could, for example, say to invert the direction here, if you, for example, wire the up and down uh, in the opposite way, then you can do this in the software, which is pretty cool. And also, the both devices, Tree and Air, can automatically set the drive times. So what we had to do here with the T up and T down with a stopwatch, we do not have to do here because we measure the current and we see from the beginning current. And so you go once completely up and completely down via the app or with the push button, and then they know the times by the current measurement. So what we have to do is to copy and paste the touch to it. And they are still red because we don't have, or we did not set the correct direction. So we say this one might have 25 degree and this one might have, I don't know, 180. This is south. Okay. And those two are red as long as we have not paired the devices. So I would need to connect to a mini server and learn in a real device and then they will turn green. Okay. So how can we now do automatic shading? You see the intelligent room controller has an output QS, which is asking for help when the room temperature is above my comfort temperature during summertime. So if I want in summer 21 degree, then at 21, this one goes one and asks for help. And now all the shading blocks have an input called AS for automatic shading. And based on this input, they will say, okay, what is my direction here? And if my direction is correct, then I know, okay, I go down with the blind, okay? And if it's like this blind you saw in the video with the slats, then it will also set the angle of the slats to, um, to 90 degree on the sunshine, okay? So it reflects most of the heat, but it's still nice and bright in the room. And that's why also the TR time is so important here. Now, how can we do this? We could now do a quick connection like this for all three of them, but actually it is way easier also for, uh, for touch here. Oops, sorry, this should not be here. Um, if you make a central block, so there is a shading, shading, overview, shading central. And with this shading central block, you can now select 
all the windows in this room. And now we can say we only once connect the T5 to it and also only once connect the automatic shading. So this makes it not only faster to program, but also in the app you will see for each room or for, let's say, the whole house if you make a shading block, all the blinds and the current state in the app. Okay, so that's pretty cool. What about if it's raining outside? Should the automatic then shade? Well, most likely not. So every automatic blinds block has here a tick box, which is by default true, use sunshine variable. So if this is ticked, the AS is also taking into consideration not only the direction, but also if the sun is shining, which comes from the global system variable here, sunshine. And this is taking it, or this variable takes it from the source weather server. If you would have a weather station, Trio Air, you can choose it here as well. Or if you have a third party device, you can also define the value by logic. And then you connect a 0 to 10 volt uh, look sensor or whatever to it. You, you know, okay? So that's also pretty cool. Um, ah, one thing we forgot. Um, what if we want to open the balcony door when. We open the, the door. Then we can use a window contact on air, for example, or a wired one on the digital input. And now we simply connect this input here to a dedicated input called door contact here, ID. And then this uh, door automatically opens. Okay. So that's pretty easy as well. Also, it blocks the automation once the door is open. Just imagine you're just taking uh, no, nothing with you. You're on the balcony, uh, no phone, no key, you're in the garden. And then the inside temperature goes high and the sun is there and everything, and it would go down with the blind. Then you would lock yourself out. But with this also, uh, this situation cannot happen because once the door is open, it does not automatically shade as well. Mm -hmm. Right, And actually, uh, we have to invert this input because the window contact, when the window is closed, delivers 1. And when the window is open, it is 0. You can also test this in the simulation or in the live here if you're not sure about this, but most of the contacts work like this. So we have to invert it because here it means if the signal goes true, goes 1, then it goes completely up and locks the function block. So we need to invert it with this click on here. You could also put a not function block in between. Now, what about making cool logics like, uh, you remember with the neighbors, privacy mode. So there is times in the periphery for sunrise and sunset. Okay, And if you say the pulse at sunrise, and you could do this now on a central page for all the blinds for the whole house, or you can make exceptions like the bedroom. But just to showcase you here, I would say for sunrise in the morning, I go completely up. And for sunset, oops, for sunset, I go completely down automatically. So when the sun goes down, when it gets dark, then all the blinds in the house completely close, except maybe the one where the window is open or where the, uh, the door is open, balcony door. Okay, again, so you cannot lock yourself out. Okay, and this is in principle how automatic shading is programmed and is working. But there is various other parameters in here. You can choose what should happen after the shading period, what, what happens here, um, should the blinds fully open. So after the, the sun is over this window, it's gone on this window, should the blinds go up, should they go down. I once had the case where the customer wanted for security reasons that the blinds are always down, not like fully closed, the, uh, the slats. But um, the, the blinds were always fully closed. So uh, we set them on no action. So they stayed where they are. Okay. Then you might have dead times from the motor. When you change the direction of the motor, there might be delays from the motor itself. So you can really fine tune it. There is also um, parameters to say, okay, when the direction of the window is 
not perfectly 90 degree, but we wait a little longer or there might be some obstacle like a, a wall from a house here, as you see on the window, then you can even say here, um, the shading should start um, with the DT angle and not that 90 degree, okay? So a lot of stuff can be done in here. And if you have any question on, on these blocks, we're always glad to help you because we know it's a, it's a huge topic and I think it's worth it because shading has a huge impact, as I said, on the climate of the room. And that's just a brilliant way and a cheap way to assist the cooling system and also the heating system in winter. Because when you have the roller blinds or the shades down at night in winter, then we, we can save some energy in winter as well. And last but not least, let's quickly go on a central page. What if the wind is high so we need a wind storm protection therefore let's quickly add a weather station tree where we say it's on the roof it's outside okay so we have here the wind speed the temperature the storm warning and everything so this one here this value would be the real wind speed so from zero to whatever kilometers per hour or miles per hour depending on your config setting but the weather station also has a dedicated storm warning, which is digital. So here you can already set the storm warning speed in kilometers per hour, which is 35 by default. And this can be taken here. And then this is all, this would be the same as you would say the wind speed is greater than 35. This would be completely the same, but it's just faster. Okay. So these two logics are completely the same. And now we can say, if the wind speed is greater than 35, what should happen? We go on to a central function block on a shading central, which has all the blinds in the whole house, so also living room, bathroom, and so on. And it has a dedicated input for uh, safety shutdown, SP. And what SP does is, as you see here on each individual block, the SP input puts the shades into the security position, which is by default up. You could change this to default close it. So when a storm is coming, the blinds go down. This could make sense if you have roller blinds and the roller blinds are insured. So that you have an insurance for the blinds, but not for the windows. This would be the only reason why I would ever change this. But by default, especially for Venetian blinds, it has to be up. Now we can say, okay, when the wind speed is greater than 35, then we go up. But what if the wind speed is quickly greater than 35, then it goes down again, and then it goes up again, so it should not permanently uh, go up and down with the shades, right? So you could say we make a little switch off delay, switch off delay here right switch off delay off let's say i don't know 1800 like half an hour it needs to be below uh, 35 and then it goes on the sp input right so as simple as that and also the auto configuration by the way programs you this even better so if i delete this for for now and i say here now um shading let's go to my auto configuration okay 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 do nothing here but here we say now storm protection and frost protection and now you see the logic created here on the central page which is even a bit more advanced so you see here the wind speed variable which is taken it from the weather server or from the roof's weather station with a threshold switch at 45 kmh it goes on and below 30 it goes off and then there is a switch off delay as we had it with uh, 45 minutes yes and here it takes a on and off edge detection and when it goes on we go on to a switch in the in the app so you're not so in my logic it would have been blocked with no way to to manually interact it would be blocked by the logic but in here it takes a switch function block so you see in the app the storm protection being on so you see what's going on 
I mean, on every function block you see as well, if it turns red in the app and you see this, the DSP the input, so for safety shutdown is on. But here you can deactivate it, okay? So we also work with an operating mode storm protection here. And for the frost protection, that's also pretty cool because the, the worst thing that can happen to a blind is it is down, overnight it snows, then the snow melts and then it freezes again. So there is like an ice block on the shade outside and it's down. And if you then go up with it, it might damage the blind. So what's happening here is we have the outdoor temperature, again, a threshold switch. If it's below one degree, we have to wait until it's above 10 degree again. Then there is rain as well. So if there is rain and the temperature is low, then we also go on to a, sh a frost protection with an edge detection again, off and on, and activate the frost protection here as well. Okay. And then we go with the two operating modes here. With the storm protection, we go on the SP for the safety, go fully up, but careful at the frost protection, we go on to the stop input, not fully up. When it's frost protected, it needs to stop. If it's down, it needs to stay down because otherwise it would damage the blind. So this was it for the shading video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. And I see all of you in the next one. Bye, guys.